Hello Grade 11s, sorry I can't be with you today. Um, we are going to be taking a look at the Poisson distribution today. Um, so I thought I'd make a short video to try and help you through with that. Um, so we're going to start by diving straight into something that can be modelled as a Poisson distribution and we'll think a little bit about how this is different to the binomial distribution we've been looking at so far. So here it is. Consider the case of people arriving in a queue at an average rate of two per minute. Let x be the random variable of the number of people who arrive between 10 and 10.05 on a particular day. How many people would you expect to arrive on average during this time? So hopefully you're thinking to yourself, well, the, they're arriving on average at two per minute. And if that's going on for five minutes, we can expect five lots of two. So we would expect 10 people. Now we've made some um, assumptions here. Uh, we have made the assumption that these two people per minute are gonna keep arriving at this, um, this kind of constant rate. Um, so constant rate of two per minute. And we've also assumed that this is independent. So the people aren't going to look at the queue and go, oh, there's six people there. That's too many. I'm not going to go to the queue. I'm going to go and join another queue or I'm going to come back another day or later on. Um, so we are assuming that this, these events are independent. Um, so what's the sample space for X? What values could X take? Well, we're saying that on average there's two people joining per minute, but in theory we could have zero people who join the queue. We could have one person or two people or three people or all the way up to ten people or more than ten people. In fact, there isn't really a limit to the number of people that could join the queue. So the sample space for X is from zero all the way onwards. Um, it has to be a whole number, obviously, because we're talking about people joining a queue, but there's no limit. And this is the main way that it's different from the binomial distribution. It is not bounded. Um, so with the binomial distribution, we were saying, well, we're going to do this many trials. We're going to do six trials. And so the most successes you can have is six. Whereas with the Poisson distribution, we're looking at it over, in this case, a period of time. And there is no upper limit. Okay, um, unbounded, no upper limit. Okay, so let's. So that is really the main difference between the two. Um, we've still, yeah, um, we're still talking about discrete data. Um, so people or successes or things that are that can be counted in a discrete manner. Um, but the Poisson distribution is completely unbounded. The binomial distribution, we, we are saying we've got n trials and n is the maximum number of successes we can have. Thinking about the notation, um, in this case, we've got x and we're saying it can be described as a Poisson distribution. Um, and just as with the binomial distribution, we use this symbol. Okay, so x is distributed or uh, can be represented by a Poisson distribution. You see we use PO for Poisson. And the only v value we put in is called, um, it's called the mean sometimes. So we call that the mean. Um, why is it 10? Why isn't it two? Well, the reason it's 10 is because X was actually over five minutes, not over one minute. So we said there were two per minute, but we're doing it for five minutes. So for x, the mean, the expected value is 10. So that's the only parameter we put in. You remember with the binomial, we put in n and p. n was the number of trials, p was the probability of success. With the Poisson, uh, we just put in this mean. Okay, so a few notes. In general, if x satisfies these requirements, um, it can be modelled with a Poisson distribution. So it counts 
the number of occurrences of an event in a given interval. In this case, it was counting the number of people joining a queue in a given interval of five minutes. The interval may be to do with time, as we've just looked at, or it could be to do with space. Um, so it could be you've got a, a length of rope and we're looking at X could be how many knots there are in that rope. And so the, the dimension is the length of rope that you're looking at. Uh, an average rate of occurrence in a given time interval is given and is uniform across all the time intervals being considered. So that was this average rate, this rate of two people joining the queue per minute. Um, it was uniform across all the time interviews. That was the assumption that we had made. Occurrence in a time interval are independent and occurrences cannot occur at the same time or position. Um, so people can join the queue straight after each other, but they cannot join the queue at exactly the same point. One of them has to be in front of the other one. Um, we're given the probability distribution function as a function. Um, do not worry, we do not need to use this formula for the exam. Just as the binomial, we're going to use our calculator is going to do it all for us. Um, so let's look at that. It's very similar to what we were doing with the binomial distribution. We've got a density function that is for finding the probability of eight people joining the queue in our five minutes. We would use the Poisson density function and we've got a cumulative dense, um, distribution. Cumulative. And that was the one where we are saying, oh, well, what is the probability of up to five people joining our queue? Um, and we can also put in a range, so we can say what's the probability of six to nine people joining our queue in these five minutes. Um, so we'll look at using all of those now. Um, I am going to suggest maybe you look, we just watch how to do the very first parts of the example. And if you're feeling comfortable with it, you pause the video, you have a go on your own, and then you um, can skip through and check your answers if you want. You can go to the OneNote and check your answers, They're all, they'll all be on there. Um, or if you're not agreeing or you're um, not feeling comfortable, keep listening to the video. So I'm fully expecting some of you to be tuning out soon and that is okay. As long as you're going through and attempting it all and making sure that um, you are understanding it. Okay, assume that the number of goals scored in a football match can be modelled by the Poisson distribution with parameter 2.9. So this is our mean, this parameter here. Let G be the number of goals in a particular match. So we are going to say that G is modelled as a Poisson distribution with parameter 2.9 because it was 2.9 in one match and G is just for one match. So in A part I, find the probability that G is equal to 4. So we're going to go to our calculator. And just as before, we're looking in probability. We're looking in density because we're just after one value. And we're looking at Poisson now. So let's remind ourselves, we've got a parameter of 2.9, 2.9, comma, and we're after the probability of four goals. Okay, so we're just putting in two values this time. Um, and there we go, there's our probability, 0 0.162. So we did Poisson, 2.9, comma, 4, equals 0 0.162, hopefully I remember that. Yep. Okay, um, if you are feeling confident, you know, you're thinking, oh yeah, it's very similar to what we're doing with the binomial in terms of using the calculator, by all means, pause the video, work through example six, example seven, if you want to, read and work through the next page, and then you can either jump onto the shared OneNote and check your answers, agree with mine, or you can skip through the video and agree and see if you agree and see if there's anything you need to check. Um, if not, we can keep working through. That's absolutely fine as well. Okay, so part two then, um, we're looking at the probability that G is less than or equal to three. So this is a cumulative one. We're saying zero, one, two, or three goals. So we're gonna do Poisson CDF this time. We're gonna go for 2.9 and we're counting up to three. 
Remember, if you're counting from zero up, you only need to put in the upper bar uh, boundary. You could also, if you don't like doing that, if you always want to put in both ends, you could put zero comma three. So let's look, we're doing probability cumulative this time and Poisson. We're looking at 2.9 and we're counting up to three. Okay, there we go, 0 0.670. Okay, and that's probably to be expected if we're expected if we got this um, expected value of two point nine goals per game, probability of getting zero, one, two, or three goals should be quite high, shouldn't it? Okay, uh, next we are looking at the probability of getting more than four four goals or more. So it's going to be a CDF function. And there's a few ways you can do it. Um, I think the easiest way is to say that we're going from four up to a very large number. Because we're, we're talking about a parameter of 2.9. So the chance of getting 10 goals in a game is very low. So adding on the probability for the 10th goal isn't going to make a big difference. If, you add, if you're going up to 999 or even more like I have, the probability of adding on are going to be completely negligible. Um, so this, I think, is the easiest way. There are other ways of doing it. Um, you can also look at uh, 1 minus um, 1 minus our answer from part 2. So if we're after 4, 5, 6, 7 goals plus, what we can also do is think of it as taking away 0, 1, 2, and 3 goals away from 1. Because we know that all of these must add up to 1. So that's your other option. Um, in this case, that's quite sensible, actually, because we've got, we've, we've got this, haven't we? Um, but in general, if, you don't have, if it's not clearly linked to the um, previous part, it's just as easy to just do what we're doing here and put in the boundary. So when we do this, we can check do the two, do part two and three add up to one. So we'll do probability cumulative Poisson 2.9 comma four comma large number and we get 0 0.330. Um, looking at the two numbers, let's see if we add them together, do we get one? Okay. So even going to however many decimal places that is, that's about 10 or 11 decimal places, it's still accurate, um, still precise. So that was, what was it? 330. Okay, let's look at the next question. So the next question, we're taking this in a slightly different direction. Let L be the number of goals scored in five matches. Write down the distribution of L and use it to find another probability. So now we're looking at five matches. Well, the parameter for one match was 2.9. What would we expect for five matches? Well, we'd expect 2.9 times five, which is, how much is that? I think it's 14.5. So we're gonna say that L is going to follow a Poisson distribution with 14.5 because that's how many goals we'd expect after five games. So what are we looking for? We're trying to find the probability that we have less than 10 goals, given that there are more than or equal to two goals. So that is the same as the probability of between two and 10 goals divided by the probability that L is greater than or equal to two. So this is one of our conditional probabilities. Okay, so we're gonna do two plus one CDFs. Um, let's do the first, just so I can show some workings out, I'm gonna do, work them out separately and then divide them. So, my parameter is 14.5 and I'm going from 2 to 10. My parameter was 14.5, I'm going from 2 to 10. 
this is my the top of my fraction and then at the same time let's work out the other one this was 14.5 and we're going from 2 and up okay very large number so 0 0.14485 I'll write down divided by Nine 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 nine. Oops, wrong way. Zero point nine 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 nine. Okay, that is not going to make much of a difference, then, is it? This divided by this. Zero point one four five. Yeah, very little difference. Okay, if you're feeling confident, um, you might want to have a go at the next one on your own. Um. We will keep going through them though. Uh, in fact, I might just put very clear workings out for this on our OneNote um, because it's the same kind of idea. Um, okay, so we will move on now. Obviously, take the time to work through example seven, pause, check your answers, and then when you're ready, you can move on. Um, so, a, a note at the top here, the sum of two independent Poisson distributions is also a Poisson distribution. So we'll look at an example of that now. Um, cars arrive at a junction from two directions, north and east. Those arriving from the north for a log Poisson distribution with a mean of three cars per five minute interval, and those from the east, 2.5 cars per five minute interval. Find the probability of fewer than 10 cars arriving in a 10 minute interval, stating an extra assumption you are making. Okay, so we're looking at 10 minute intervals and we've been given five minute intervals. Doesn't specify north or east, so we can assume the cars can arrive from both directions. So we are getting 5.5 cars per five minutes. And we want to see how many are in 10 minutes, so we're gonna to have to double that, which is 11. So we can say X is the number of cars, number of cars arriving in 10 minutes. X, we're gonna model as a Poisson distribution with parameter 11. And we want to find the probability of fewer than 10. So that is less than 10. I'm going to change that to less than or equal to 9 because that's more helpful for discrete probabilities because our cumulative functions go up to and include the number we put in. So we're going to do a Poisson CDF with 11 and 9 and we will get... Plus on CDF with 11, 9. And we get 0.341. Okay, so um, very similar to what we've been doing, just showing that we can combine those two Poisson distributions together. Part B, find the probability of a total of eight cars arriving in a five minute interval, given that three have arrived from the north. Okay, so if three have arrived from the north, that means five must arrive from the east. So really what we're looking at here is what's the probability of three cars arriving from the east? Uh, let's have a new random variable. E is number cars arriving from east in five minutes. And E is going to be Poisson, but it's five minutes now, and it's from the east, so that is just the 2.5 we're given in the question. So back down to five minutes, and we're just looking at the east. So we want to find the probability that E is equal to five, because we want exactly eight cars, and three have already arrived. There's no above or below. So... Poisson, 2.5 comma 5.
density this time, 2.5,5 is very low, 0 0.0668. 0 0.0668. Okay, so we are just going to do one tiny bit more. Um, we're going to add a little bit for our notes. Um, the expected value of a Poisson distribution with parameter a is clearly, sorry, alpha is clearly alpha. Yeah, we're, we've been using the words expected value as we've been going through this, actually. Um, so clearly, um, our expected value is just alpha. We don't need a formula like we did with the binomial expansion. Um, one feature of a Poisson distribution that you also need to know is that the variance is also equal to alpha. Um, these are given in your formula guide. Okay, I think they actually use the letter N rather than alpha, but they're given in the formula guide. So what this actually is, it's less useful for just finding those features, it's more useful for testing whether or not a Poisson distribution is a good model. So if the mean and the variance are not close together, it's probably not appropriate that you're using a Poisson distribution. Um, if you're modelling, remember, they don't have to be perfectly identical, but if they're quite far apart, you know, if they're 10% apart, 20% apart, then it's not so it's not so um, appropriate to be using a Poisson distribution. So good to know, especially if you're thinking of doing some, like if you're having to justify why you're using a Poisson distribution, why it's appropriate, or if you're doing thinking about an IA that's going to involve a lot of probability, then that's another consideration. Okay, the la final question is kind of linked to those ones we were doing at the end of last lesson. Um, we're given a random variable t, it's modelled by a Poisson distribution. Uh, notably, we do not know what that um, parameter is. So we can say that t is modelled by a Poisson distribution with some sort of mean. We could use m if we want, or alpha, or whatever letter you like. Given that p t is greater than 2 is equal to 0 0.53, find the variance. Well, if we find the mean, we will also find the variance. So really, this is just testing that you know that fact. So we're told that p, the probability that t is greater than 2 is 0 0.53. Uh, greater than is less helpful than a greater than or equal to symbol. So greater than 2 means 3 and above. So I'm going to think of it instead as greater than or equal to 3. Okay, we did this using our calculators yesterday with binomial problems. Um, and we used the function app. So this is what we're going to be putting into our calculator. Um, M does not have to be a whole number because it's not, it's just the average, isn't it? So it doesn't have to be a whole number. So we're going to do Poisson M3. Probability, it's cumulative, it's Poisson, we don't know what x is, but we know that it's going from 3 to a very big number, and this value is 0 0.53, 0 0.53. Okay, so it's Poisson, cumulative, we don't know what the um, parameter is, but we're going from 3 to a large number, and we can take a quick look. Okay. So there's our point of intersection, 2.80. Right, we can draw a little sketch of this. 0.53. And what did it do? Okay, it kind of goes up like this. And what value was it? 2.80. 2.80. 0.53. Okay, so this sketch is basically showing my workings. It's showing what I did. From looking at this sketch, someone can see that I have plotted it as a function and I found the intersection point. And then I can write down that m is also equal to the variance and it is equal to, oops, 2.80. 
quite a fancy two there. Um, okay, so for homework and class time, um, I would like you to not worry about all nine of these. I'd like you to try and get through the first six. We're going to spend an extra lesson, I think, looking at Poisson and maybe doing a bit of review. Um, maybe we'll do a little cognitive quiz. Um, we're not going to move on to the normal distribution just yet. I think it's probably pushing it a bit too fast if we do that. So try and get through the first six questions. Um, yep, yeah, and I will obviously bring any questions to class next week. And I'll see you then. Enjoy your weekend. Bye bye.